This is Eamon Khan here for Boxing Social in association with Betfred with the one and only Luke Campbell pulling faces. Luke Campbell just witnessed Crispin Smith get the victory over Isaac Chamberlain in what was an attritional affair. A brilliant fight to watch for a fan. Luke, your assessment? Oh, um, firstly, both guys, what a credit to the sport. Both of them absolute warriors. Um, the grit, the determination, the desire that they both showed in the ring tonight was, was incredible. Chris come out victorious, which is brilliant. Um, put in a hell of a performance against a very good, tough guy. Um, did what he needed to do on short notice and got the victory. Break that down for me, just what you were seeing round by round, how Chris was able to have the successes in the ring and really push Isaac Chamberlain back. For me, what I was seeing that is um, Chamberlain was was dangerous at like at, at length. Like he'd let his shots go. He's he's, he's got a sharp jab. He's quite reactive, um, and he's got good movement and stuff like that. So the way that Chris needed to be is is be mid range to short on his chest, letting the right hand go over the top, hitting his butt, digging him into his body, and but he had to jab his way in. Um, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. He had to jab his way in to obviously get in there because he couldn't just watch walk in as a, as a a target that just stood stood in front of someone. He had to give it a little bit of movement, jab his way in, and then where? Um, Chris as well. He wants a big fight next. Whatever whatever happens next, he wants a big fight there. A world title next for Chris? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, listen, Chris is never in a dull fight. He's always in exciting fights, um, plead crowds in fights, and you know he's he's he definitely deserves world honours, and hopefully he can get a world title shot moving forward now. Part of the gym as well. We saw Caroline Dubois, Hassan Azim too. Word on those. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable stable that Shane's creating um, and they're all in the process of learning and getting better and two really good performances tonight um, and Hassan, you know, can, can really whack. I've heard a lot of stories about him in the gym putting people to sleep but, you know, it's that process of just getting the rounds under his belt and adapting and learning and you know, being a little bit more smarter in there and not going crazy and, you know, it's just, it's, it's all part of the process. Let's turn to you. Uh, nights like this, do they give you a desire to return at all? Yeah, do you know what? Weirdly, the, 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 tension, the intenseness of Chris's fight and being on the edge of my seat and the crowd going crazy and everyone screaming at Chris to chuck up and to do this and do that, like... Like obviously, you look at a normal person, look at that thinking, you got to be crazy. Like, uh, you got to be crazy to do that. But I look at that thinking, oh, I actually, there's, there's elements of that I actually do really miss. But I don't think I would put my family through that anymore. Um, you know, boxing's been a huge part of my life, and it's it's been who I have been for the past 22 years. And I've done very well for, out of boxing and, and I've created a, a life, a very good life from boxing. And, um, you know, I've got that, the kids, the family and everything at home and businesses that I've set up and stuff like that. I look at going back into training camp and then I'd have to stop doing what I'm doing there and building then to go back into boxing as much as I, I actually I do. You know, I, I, I don't know if I will cross that over because I've always said to myself before I ever retired, I'm never going to be a boxer that comes, like, I'm going to retire at the age of 34. I retired a little bit earlier than that. Um, and that's that's me done. I'm, I'm never going to be the one that comes back because I want to live life, I want to enjoy life. And when I was boxing, I took it very serious, maybe a little bit too serious. And um, I was very disciplined, uh, disciplined and dedicated and... You know, I didn't drink alcohol or anything like that, and now I'm I'm doing things I've never done in life before. Where I'm going out with my friends on the drink. I've, I've been I've been on a stag do for the first time in my life at the age of 34. You know, I've never do, never had the opportunity to do anything like this. It's only small things, and yeah, they probably get boring and get tired because you know you can do it, but. Them little things to me, I've never been able to do anything like that in my life. So I'm enjoying life, I'm doing track, I've got a lot of things booked in for travelling this year. Been going out on my bikes, playing golf, building the gyms that I'm doing. So it's like, I've got a very good lifestyle and I have to thank boxing for that. And if I am coming back, what, what is it I am coming back for? Is it is it to, to look for a world title? Or is it just to have a couple more fights and 
go through that process again. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. I think that was beautifully well uh, spoken. Um, couldn't, uh, don't know how really to transition from that, but it was re- very, very well, very brilliant to listen to. Essentially, I just want to get your thoughts on a couple of things since you were last out. The lightweight division has moved on, uh, moved, uh, or we've seen uh, Devin Haney capture all the titles. Ryan Garcia is doing the thing. Javante Davis is doing the thing. Your thoughts on division? Yeah, that's that's the one for me. Like, I probably would be more tempted if I could come back and be a lightweight. But in the last fight I had with Ryan Garcia, the weight killed me. Mm. Like, I couldn't make that weight anymore. To be honest with you, I, I, I don't even. I think I struggled to make welterweight. Mm. I don't even think I'd make welterweight. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm like 25, 30 pounds above welterweight, but there's nothing on me. Mm. You know, so I didn't even struggle to do that. So it's a complete different category of fighters that I've never, you know, been in with or known. Um, but yeah, all them lads are, are doing what they did. Um, Haney put in a great performance against Cambosis. I mean, it was a. He it, it just had to keep it simple. But I always said, all you got to do to Cambosis is put a little bit of movement on him, and he's and he comes unstuck. You know. But if you want to stand in the middle of the ring and have a tear up with him, then he'll get he'll get his success that way. But all Haney did was use a jab and his footwork. It wasn't the most exciting fight, but appreciate Haney's discipline to keep doing that and his skill, and not get brought into a tear up. You know, he did what he needed to do. Um, he won the titles fair and square. Good fight. Not the strongest of world world champions by by any means, but you know he's still very young, um, and I'm sure he'll progress and do very well. Um, you know, I do honestly believe Ryan Garcia is probably the best the best out, out out of that bunch, other than Lemachenko. You know. Um, I really hope that they can make Garcia versus Tank. I think that'd be a great fight. A uh, fight that boxing needs. Mm. There's no reason why these can't be made. Mm. Every time I, I got made against all all the top 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 level fighters, so why can't? And I just I said yes to them all. So, so mm. why can't why can't they get why can't they get made? Mm-hmm. You know, I honestly think that Ryan Garcia probably knocks Tank out. I really do. If we could go through the machinations of the whole lightweight division, it would be great to speak to you about that in a future date. I just want to get your thoughts on a couple of other things. Uh, first of all, uh, Anti Joshua approaches a very very big rematch uh, with Usyk. Your thoughts on his approach and how he has to win that fight? Well, he's taking it. Firstly, he's taking it very serious. Um, he started a training camp before he, before he was due to start a training camp. So I know he's taking it serious. I know he's changing his mindset and the things he's doing. Um, I think he's. I think he goes in there and gets a KO. Yeah. I mean, if, for me, when I looked at it, he already landed a shot on him last time, but the, the Usyk's face was bust up. He's got to go in there and just throw. Whether he's landing on his hands, his guard, his elbows, his arms, just hit him. Big strong guy like that, just. Punch, 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 punch. It feels like since you retired, it almost like the floodgates opened with the YouTube stars and stuff, and you got like loads of YouTubers fighting too. Jake Paul is someone who's really catapulted himself. Your thoughts on Jake Paul as a fighter, and is he a legitimate boxer in your eyes? Um, what, why, yeah, why not? You know what I mean? Why not? I think he's a super smart guy with what he's achieved. Um, you know, and he seems to be taking boxing really serious. So why why not? Why can't he just be the same as the rest of the boxers? Um, you know, he's he's taking it serious. He's training. He's training. Um, yeah, of course he can be a boxer. The guy can. The guy's already proved he can do whatever he want, every, Anything he puts his hands to, he seems to he seems to, to do very well at it. You know, so why not? And it brings in a different audience to boxing as well. Huge audience. Luke, we'll leave that there. Again, I could pick your brain on a number of things, but I don't want to keep you all night. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for speaking to Box Social. All the best. Luke.